Hello everyone, it's my great pleasure to introduce our new pick solver. My name is Nies Thürey and I want to walk you through the main advantages of this new solver that we are releasing or that is already online. Before going into the details, I do want to thank all the students who worked on this, namely the ones down here and especially Alexandra, the main author of the solver, writing this one pretty much from scratch up. All right, so I do want to point out right away the main goal of all this is high fidelity 3D fluid simulations as a key challenge for the field. I won't close the topic, there's plenty of work left to do, but I hope that this solver will provide a, a feasible and uh, exciting way towards goals in this area. So I think we can distinguish a few main methodologies here in the field of AI and fluid mechanics. And I, I think it makes sense to so classify them as surrogates versus hybrid solvers. So surrogate, with that I mean we have only a neural network, plenty of uh, previous work on that area, exciting field by itself. But what I want to focus on following is the other variant, namely we have a neural network and a solver together and the solver is going to stay in the loop. Like we've called this previously solver in the loop approaches. This is in line with quite a few previous works, also interesting work uh, from the reinforcement learning field, training with the solver. So that's what I focus on in the following and rest assured, right, won't be any pins in the following, right? That's a completely different field. I do want to point it out right away, uh, no pins. Yeah, for these hybrid solvers, we've looked at this for quite a while and on average, we've noticed that across a wide field of, of results, we can actually gain roughly a 10 times gain in accuracy by employing this hybrid paradigm. So if you would want to train your neural network by itself to do a certain task, and then you bring in a low fidelity solver plus a neural network, this combination, right? You have typically small cost from the solver, but the network has a much simpler task and overall the gain can be 10 times and larger. So it really can accelerate both the accuracy of the learning task and as I'll show in a moment also, it can actually make your solver more accurate. So this is what we'll be focusing in the following. Might wonder, well, right, why aren't more people using this? And this nice figure here from picture from Sora illustrates it a bit well. It's actually not so easy to pull this off. You need a solver that is differentiable and right now many of them are not. But this is exactly what we want to focus here with the picked solver. It has a couple of key features that I want to go through here in the following. So one of them is it's really built for and within PyTorch. So it's got a seamless integration. The different building blocks of the solver are available as operators in PyTorch. So you can call them just like activation function or conflict layer, just providing basically on a PyTorch tensor, the functionality to perform an accurate fluid solve. And yeah, of course, the main goal of this is, why it's interesting and seamless, it's fully differentiable, right? So you don't need to worry about gradient propagation. We have custom functions that do this efficiently and provide a gradient for the input. And right, that really makes it possible to work with simulations like with other data in PyTorch. And as a con consequence, it's uh, pretty obvious if you think about it, but it's worth pointing out. You can very easily couple it with a neural network, right? It's really just like an additional layer or operator in your, in your pipeline. You can do machine learning with it. Um, and of course, also it's, it's gradient based. It provides gradients. You can run any gradient based optimizer or thanks to being differentiable, also the hybrid solvers in an outer loop to optimize for certain derived um, goals. What's behind the solver? That's worth pointing out here. So it's based on the PISO solve. It's not the absolutely latest, but it's a decent solve. It's typically um, uh, gives you second order time stepping accuracy has accurate uh, spatial operators with a uh, or a semi implicit solve for stability using finite volumes so state of the art. And what makes it particularly interesting is uh, it's very flexible in the grid structures. So you can see this here in the in examples, the C-shaped grids, grids, for example, it uses regular structured grids, but they can be deformed arbitrarily to form these multi-block grids around 
an obstacle in the flow, so it's using um, uh, conforming um, obstacle representation, corresponding accuracy, and this can be then coupled with learning tasks. Another neat functionality that we already used and found useful was it provides high order moments for um, turbulence st statistics and of course also, also differentiable so you can use them right away in your pipeline. And we did validate it in the accompanying paper also, you can see the link down here, you can find all the details. Yeah, so this is what I want to advertise with this video. It would be great to have other people trying it out. PICT is basically enabling you to train these hybrid solvers that have a neural network interacting or any neural architecture, any architecture with your solver. It's worth mentioning here, right? It's basically agnostic to the architecture. You plug, can plug anything in here. You can use a graph net on top or your favorite uh, neural operator uh, representation. We're just providing the building block of an accurate and efficient solver that can couple with these. One key thing that we found super useful here and that I can highly recommend what in a way the solver is built for is unrolling. So you don't just want to train for pre-computed one-step supervised signals, but you want to let the solver run at training time. It's fast enough to do this even for 3D cases. I'll show in a moment. And that basically gives the network a gradient for the temporal evolution. It can get feedback from the, from the future based on some initial action. It gets a gradient for how this action evolves and what consequences it has down the line and that is really important to train accurate models right it gets a bit formalized with this loop from a loss over multiple steps of u the state of our simulator and um, this turned out for us and i think will also for any user of picked turn out to be very useful um, for training another quick note here i can't go into detail but it's a very interesting topic so building all these operators from scratch with a custom implementation allowed us to actually perform efficient backprop. For example, uh, in the initial stages when your network is not super accurate yet, we notice it's not necessary to do all the solves in the backwards pass with the, with the highest accuracy. So especially for initial backwards passes, you can su substantially speed up your training if you do a low fidelity solve, kind of keeping the information from the gradient in terms of its accuracy, you can see like the noise noise level on par um, with the train network and from that you just get faster training and right, the, these custom solvers here in PICT actually make it quite convenient to do just this. All right, let me show some examples of PICT in action. I want to show first a um, neat example from, from how. Very classic case, backward facing step. So this is a 2D example trained on a Bunch of different Reynolds numbers and evaluated on a slightly higher one, 1400, um, comparing to previous work here. And we're directly doing this. I want to skip all the all the easier tests for many thousand, six thousand steps in total evaluations. So and of course uh, trained uh, for much shorter periods, but stay stable for a pretty arbitrary amount of time. The evaluation is using this long-term uh, capabilities. This is 2D for now. I'll come to 3D in a moment, but we have to build the basics. We're comparing here the low fidelity solver, meaning something that's intentionally unresolved compared with a hybrid, so network and solver, so it stays in the loop, and we are evaluating things that were not part of the training. So one interesting thing here for, uh, for the backward facing step, uh, some of you might be familiar with this, is the reattachment length, right, from the vortex, where does it hit in terms of zero um, x velocity, the, the lower plane, that's highlighted here in um, green um, for the reference, and as you can see at the top, the low fidelity solver by itself is way too short, doesn't get this right. Whereas the hybrid solver at the bottom is actually very accurate, comes very close to the reference. And this is now average right over long um, time periods. The actual flows are very fluctuating. And at this range of number, quite interesting. But this is really the kind of emergent long term behavior that matches the, the reference very accurately. We can also look at other quantities here. So it's a skin friction coefficient. Um, if you're familiar with this case, it also matches nicely. The green line is the lower solve and the one with the network does much better here in two variants actually. So if you're interested, the paper also provides a couple of other metrics. As a first point towards performance, so the 
um, the lower solver to get the same level of accuracy, shown here on the side, is actually almost twice, uh, takes twice the time um, compared to the hybrid solver. It's not a huge factor, but this is a fairly lightweight 2D test. And what's important with all these performance comparisons, we can't just compare with the reference data, right? Yet we did not do this here. That's important. I want to point it out again, right? The reference data typically has higher uh, fidelity, has less error than what we get with training. So what's important to actually lower the fidelity of your solve to the level of the network and then compare on that level to make it a fair comparison. Here we really have the same solver with PICT. It's used throughout um, comparing fairly on a similar level of accuracy and it's still faster. Okay, so just to point out, here's a simple 2D case that works. Let's go look at something more interesting, a 3D turbulent channel flow. So this is now really a turbulent case um, in terms of um, uh, Tower Reynolds number. Uh, this is a 550 scenario in line with previous work. And also similar to previous work, the Novati paper, we're actually supervising just in terms of statistics, right? This is a turbulent case. If we run this long enough, it will decorrelate. For, for chaotic turbulence, it doesn't make sense to have pointwise direct supervision signals. And hence, what we're supervising here are really the turbulence statistics. And um, for this scenario, they're actually coming from uh, an external spectra solver, so really a very accurate target as a baseline. And the whole training, all it basically uses to train the network are just some, some 1D curves that specify how the turbulence statistics with respect to the wall should be in the reference. So in a way, it's really a minimal uh, supervision signal. There are no direct states. Um, it's, it's basically a handful of, of numbers for these reference statistics. Uh, here you can see a preview of this case in action. So it's really a turbine case, vortex shelling from the, from the top and bottom uh, plates and how these evolve over time. Here you can see some qualitative um, snapshots of single resolution. So you can already see that the, the streamwise um, velocities are too smooth in the um, low fidelity input. And also the, the simple subgrid model here is Marinsky static one uh, does quite badly in this case. The reference has a lot more, um, a lot more social, a lot of more fine scale uh, vortices being developed and the learned one looks closer. That's, of course, very qualitative. Let's see how it does in practice. And uh, a very important metric we found here is basically are these turbine statistics. Um, so how does it do in terms of keeping those up over long periods of time? And this is now um, 15 at the tur turnover times, which is equivalent to 7,500 steps. So again, many thousands of steps. It's basically unconditionally stable uh, for time unrolling, it was trained on tiny bit in the beginning with the curriculum. Uh, we referred to the paper, there are a couple of uh, neat tricks here that uh, I think you can directly, uh, that directly carry over to other scenarios. An important bit now is here the hybrid solver. So this lower, fast, low resolve with the neural network really brings the error in terms of these statistics down by more than one order of magnitude compared to the, um, to the uh, simple baselines at the top, Smolensky and the pure low fidelity solve. So this is a long-term behavior. And um, I do want to point out right, this, this concept of training with statistics alone has also been applied to, for example, reinforcement learning. The neat thing here is this really ran on, on a single workstation with one not too fancy GPU. The feedback here for training really comes from the unrolling and uh, the solver through time. So you actually, it's very sample efficient. You don't need a huge farm gathering exploration uh, from the environment. This is in a way very directed and directly trains with the solver. So I think it's a, it's a very neat uh, way to train these hybrid solvers. Yeah, um, right, we, thousands of steps. Uh, we basically couldn't break um, this variant, although the, the level of accuracy can fluctuate, but it's, uh, it really stays uh, persistent in the long run. Let's look at some um, some more details here. So here can uh, you find a bit more details of these statistics for for the experts in the field. This is really important to to get right because this is super uh, 
classic case. So the mean on the left is actually not so interesting, we're actually on the side. Um, that is quite easily matched, although the low res at the top doesn't do a very good job. And if you for a moment look at the top only, the dotted lines are actually this spectra solver, the reference. The solid lines at the top are the Smarinsky model. And at the bottom here, to make this comparison fair, we now ran an open form simulation that also has a higher error than the spectra reference, um, but um, is comparable to the trained neural network here. It's actually still, I think, 30% higher. The trained version here are the solid lines at the, at the lower case, so they actually match these statistics really well and actually better than this high resolution open form version um, just from the training. So this, is, right, this, this learned closure model really does a very good job. There's a spike here on the, or kind of a slight jump on the right towards the, uh, the, the far field away from the wall in terms of the X, um, the X variance, but overall it is actually really doing quite a bit better than the high resolution open form reference. So I think this is a very promising and, and exciting result. So also let's look at performance here because this is actually uh, now, I would argue in a way more realistic and more interesting. So in this case, open form was really expensive. So this is now using the CPU, but on 32 cores. So we also gave open form, open form if you accumulate the performance uh, capabilities of all the CPUs, more compute power than the, the hybrid version. And nonetheless, it's roughly 40 times slower than, um, than the hybrid solver here with PICT and the, the trained neural network, uh, the trained neural operator on top. The neural network itself here uses around a third, uh, these 39% of the runtime roughly. So the main part is still the 3D solve at the low resolution, but nonetheless in combination, it really outperforms the open form reference. So I think this is a very promising result. All right, I think um, I want to keep it short today, more details to come in future videos. I think we're really just scratching the surface here. I'm also very excited about the capabilities that are, will arise from the solver. I think this is really finally a tool that enables non-trivial complex 3D simulations. We had a flat plane here, but of course, right, interesting geometries are an obvious next step. Um, the differentiability makes it very fle flexible for optimization tasks. And also now we could, of course, take this trained closure model and apply it to an inverse problem that there wouldn't be any a fundamental difficulty here that would be an interesting direction for future work and if you want to try it out um, please do so you can download it right away let us know how it works or also if it doesn't work thanks again to Alexander Howe, uh, Luca and Björn who all worked hard on this direction overall and with that goodbye for now